Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning and welcome to Encounter. I'm your host today. My name is Joe Selipak. I'm the Executive Director at the Council of Churches. Well, Happy Easter. For some of you, that, that may be uh, a little bit weird hearing that uh, now that it's in May. You would expect to hear something like that in, in April. But we are in the midst of the great 50 days. Easter kind of launches us into the Easter season. And each week as you go to church, you hear um, people talking about Christ being risen. And every, every response comes back, he is risen indeed. And, um, alleluia's kind of permeate the entire the entire season so why is it important for us to celebrate the great 50 days of Easter rather than just a day of um, that that a holiday happens you remind me I had a little discussion with uh, one of our kids We're going down for liturgy of the word for with our kids and I mentioned something about Easter I said uh, you know is the, you had a great Easter? And they said, yeah, it's all over. And I said, no, it isn't. <laughs> I said, so we had a little back and forth with this young little girl, and she said, no, it's still, it's all over. And I said, no, it's still on. And I said, it's 50 days. Uh, so, yeah, we're right in the midst of the Easter season. I look at it, really, it's 90 days when you look at Ash Wednesday to Pentecost. Right. Um, you know, to see it as one entity, you know, that flows, one season flows into the other. And uh, that whole 90 days, focuses in the center of our faith as Christians, the death and resurrection of Christ. So uh, trying to take that in is, uh, you know, it's a spiritual challenge. <laughs> and, and, and the 50 days is, uh, like within the, within the biblical tradition, um, is the 50 days that between Christ's yes. resurrection and, and Pentecost, and Pentecost when, the, when the Spirit descends on the church. Mm -hmm. I actually was reading, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Brennan Manning, but oh, I, yeah. I was reading a, a, a Abba's Child. I'm, I'm rereading it for, I, I think it's probably the third time I've, I've read that book. But he was talking about even how Pentecost is the appropriation of the resurrection for the, for the church mm -hmm. and the life of the church. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's a present reality even through Pentecost, isn't mm -hmm. it? Right. So, so um, how did your congregation... Uh, my, my guest today, I, I, should, I should introduce you. My, my guest today is Tim Taher, who's uh, the pastor at St. Francis of Assisi. It's really great to have you here today. Thank you, Joe. So, um, so how did your church celebrate Easter this year? Well, I mean, I just find the Holy Week Easter celebration just a powerful exper you know, experience of the liturgy, you know, with the uh, whole, uh, you know, the tritium. And then Easter with the flowers and uh, the water, you know, we began, uh, the ritual speaks for itself. You know, right. uh, our primary uh, central liturgy for the whole year is the Easter vigil. You know, it's a long mass and a long liturgy because it takes in the liturgy of the light, the liturgy of the word, uh, the sacraments, and then the liturgy of the Eucharist. So, uh, you know, we, we began uh, with that whole kickoff, uh, welcome two new people into the church. And as you mentioned at your opening, you know, we're still in the midst of the Easter season. You know, our hymns uh, still have alleluias in them, um, you know, with fresh flowers. And uh, in, our, in our tradition and uh, in the parish, we uh, have the sprink sprinkling rite every Sunday. We call our baptism, right? You know, right. Um, so that uh, we remember that this whole season is about being baptized into the mystery of Christ. Now, this was a, a particular uh, anniversary of sorts for your congregation, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Well, uh, Easter ten years ago, April twelfth, uh, was the start of our new parish of St. Francis of Assisi. After we did a merging of parishes uh, with St. Christopher, St. Rita's, and St. Catherine's. So it was a kickoff, uh, you know, in a remembrance of that, that 10 years ago on that Easter, we started off as a new parish. So it was, a, you know, important. So we did it for two weekends, um, Sunday weekend and uh, Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, uh, we gave out these, and this, this was before the, uh, 
law changed in the in the state here regarding um, grocery bags, so All right. plastic bags. So we gave out these uh, bags uh, for uh, everyone. We passed out 500 reusable grocery bags with our logo on it, with part of our mission statement: living and sharing the gospel life. So, Excellent. so people really took took to that, and, you know, advertise. <laughs> and you did that. You did that for a particular reason too, didn't you? Because it was. It was not just about the, it wasn't just about the, um, the bags themselves and the advertising for the church. You were, you really connected it well yeah. to the season of, of Easter, didn't you? Yeah, uh, you know, I, you know, the other thing too is Easter was April 21st and then on Monday was Earth Day. Right. And I just thought that's a wonderful opportunity to bring the two together, you know, um, and they do go together, you know, because when we speak about, uh, Easter, we're spe speaking about a new creation, you right. know. Uh, you know, one of the responses in the Easter season, especially Easter weekend and through the Easter season is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth, right. you know. Right, right, uh, So it's, and St. Paul writes about a new creation. And, um, and so it's just to look at the, uh, it was a great opportunity, you know, in the homily and in using the reusable uh, grocery bags. Uh, to bring that all in. Um, and uh, I was sharing with you before, one of the, my readings this past year was Sister Elizabeth Johnson, who's a uh, theologian in the church. Um, and uh, she's just written great books. It's this book right, right here. here. Yeah. yeah, and entitled Creation and the Cross, The, Mystery, the Mercy of God for a Planet in Peril. And, um, and she just looks at how, and, I, and other theologians like Karl Rahner, uh, look at resurrection, the Easter mystery as affecting all of creation. All creation. We've, we focused and look at it just for, um, you know, yeah, life human, after death. Or human-centered kind yeah, of. Yeah, right. Where the resurrection affects all of creation. Right. Well, Paul says in Romans, one of my favorite passages of scriptures is Romans 8, where he tells us that all of creation is groaning for the right. for, for for redemption. redemption. Right. It's like, a, and, and I heard a theologian talking about that 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 passage, and he said, he said, you know, either you're in the birthing room of history with the with the world as it groans, or you're in the way, and you better get out. <laughs> and um, and what he meant by that was, you know, we are. We are in in all of this together into mm -hmm. this the suffering travail the the birthing room mm -hmm. that uh, that the earth is in and if we're not helping alleviate the the pain and the suffering and the um, the travail even of creation itself like we're we're in the way. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, I was well that you know you know Easter and Earth Day kind of really was a wonderful compliment and uh, you know. It, and also, you know, the days prior to Easter, you know, and looking at the bigger picture of our Earth and the global reality of climate change, you know, is to look at that the Earth and the environment is in a passion uh, mode, you know, right. uh, and, you know, given all of the things that have taken place in the environment. And I think that the news um, in the last few weeks, from the U different UN reports, just shows the peril of the of the environment and our planet, and um, and I think that uh, passion reality is uh, being lived out in um, in, the, in the environmental crisis. And for us as Easter people, we speak of ourselves as Easter people. We're called to be stewards of creation. Right. And you know uh, our Easter vigil. Uh, began with the first reading was from the very first chapter of Genesis, the story of creation, you know. Right, right. Uh, so, we're, you know, that grounded us right there, you know, uh, and recalling that uh, in Easter, too, it was named the eighth day. <laughs> and the eighth day, what's the eighth day? We have seven days a week. Well, the eighth day means it's a new creation. New creation, New creation. Exactly. Yeah, and so um, one, of, one of the questions that, that I often, that often ask, get asks, asked about the new creation is what is its relationship to the old creation i mean we we talk about the seven days of 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 uh, of creation itself and some people think that there's there, that there's a a split that happens between 
between um, the seventh and eighth day that we were that we're kind of talking about. We we shouldn't be concerned about the the old creation. What we should be concerned about is is what God is doing in in bringing in um, bringing in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how do you how do you resolve that tension? Well, I, I guess you know, more in personally and maybe uh, in a more community and global uh, creation concept. Um, in one of the books we're reading, we have a book club in the parish, and it's uh, into his likeness. Uh, you know, the creation we, in the mystery of Christ is dying to our old self, old creation, and rising to something new in us. So right. we become a new creation we in the Christ. mystery of Christ. Right. Um, and uh, in as stewards of creation too, in the world in which we live, is to uh, move out of the old habits, the old ways of what we, and the way we're living on this planet, right. to new ways of living, uh, new life, um, and new life. And I, th I think that's another reason uh, in the 50 days of Easter is to take into this, into our lives, this concept of reality of transformation. It's not easy. <laughs> And trying to take into the mystery of new life, the resurrection, um, is uh, takes time to really take into our souls, take into our hearts, and into our lives. Um, and I think that takes time. That's why the 50 days <laughs> is to try to delve deeper into that mystery. My guest today is Tim Taher from St. Francis of Assisi Parish. And we're talking about the season of Easter but, but in particular, we're, 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 moving, we're moving into creation care and stewardship of creation as being important for discipleship. Mm -hmm. And that's indicative of, of, of the new creation that, we're, that we are born into in this whole, this whole, resurrection, this whole resurrection season. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you appropriate that when you're, when you're talking, when you're talking to, to, like you, you, we started off by talking you were talking with a with a little girl. A girl yeah. How do we how do we appropriate that with our in 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 how we raise children and how we um, and do things inside well, of the the church? Well, I think you know. And one thing too is that you know, in our you know in church you know in churches I all through our in traditions. I mean, if there's going to be a crowd, there's going to be a crowd on Easter. Right. You know, right. and they're not going to be there next week. They're not going to be here this week. <laughs> And, you know, a lot of young people come. And I thought, you know, this is something that's close to their hearts and on their uh, radar screens is the whole environmental issues and the whole, um, you know, peril of the planet. So they're really on that. And I came across, and so I thought it was a, big, a good way to say the church is relevant, you know, the right. church is speaking out on this. Uh, another reason um, in our Catholic uh, community and I, for all people, uh, I didn't want people to f forget Pope uh, Francis's encyclical on Laudato Si, on right. care of our common home. You know, that uh, anniversary is up in this June, four years, and they want it to be forgotten that it's a powerful, imp has a powerful impact on our lives today, what it's calling us to do as people of faith. And in our Catholic social doctrine, uh, one of the principles of uh, social justice and uh, the social gospel is stewardship and care for creation. So I just think uh, for young people to hear that, that that's, uh, you know, we're not all about, you know, one area of life, but we're cons very concerned about creation. And then um, in, in, in my homily and in preparation for my homily, I came across a story of a young girl, 16-year-old girl. Now, here's uh, right. here starts an example of hope, uh, Greta Thunberg. Um, so she's in Sweden, mm -hmm. and a 16-year-old girl, I mean, she's capturing the imaginations and attentions of people. I mean, uh, three people in the Parliament of Nor uh, Norway nominated her for the Nobel Peace Prize for this coming year. and. Um, She's 16 years old, and she started the movement where now it's global. Uh, kids walking out of classes on Fridays, you know, until the global issues and, uh, and global climate change is taken seriously by adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, so she's like the 16-year-old, real sign of hope and a voice that needs to be listened to. And Time Magazine just a couple of months ago had one hundred uh, issue about the 100 influential people in 2019. 
and she's one of them. Greta is. Greta. Yeah, excellent. excellent. So I just thought there's just a lot of ways this could be woven in. It is pretty cool. And, and so, like, uh, you know, the, uh, the other thing that, that kind of, that <coughs> where my thoughts have been, been recently, and I, and I don't know what your, what, what your thinking is on this, but um, on, on Easter we had the, the, um, the, the, uh, the shooting of Christians no. in Sri Lanka. And the devastation that 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 wreaked on the community at the same time as they're trying to celebrate Easter renewal, and you have uh, retaliatory strikes against Muslims and against and against um, Jewish people, and there's this sense in which not only not only is not only is the the theology that leads us to um, like conquering the earth or subduing the earth or dominating the earth, that, that it's not only is it leading us away from creation care, but it's also leading us away from understanding what love of neighbor is all about. Mm -hmm. the, the, two things, the two things I think are, are related to each other in, in a way, because we're, we're not concerned about our, our, our brothers and sisters and we're not concerned about the world around us either. Well, yeah, well, I, let's look at an old way and a new way. You know, and I, I think you know me that I try to live a nonviolent life. I believe in nonviolence, and, and I think the, uh, you know, the whole crucifixion of Christ is the end of, you know, it's a powerful statement. No more violence. This is it. You know, and the new life is nonviolent love. <laughs> right. You know, of Jesus Christ. You know, and I think as as people of faith, again, we haven't taken that really seriously or deep in, deep into our souls. Um, so it's to move away from that old creation of violence, the old way of violence, to solve issues, to solve differences, and, but to live in a new, new life of nonviolence. And, uh, and that's uh, still, uh, that's transformation. <laughs> and, and when we look at the, the creation care, so you have two different ways of approaching it. You have the, the domineering, exactly where, right. where we are supposed to subdue creation versus the, the, the stewardship version where we are part of creation and we're helping tend and, and um, work the soil and right. looking at it as through the, through the lens of being husbands of creation rather than being, being, um, being dominate, dominating it. Mm -hmm. And in the one sense, you know, there, it's a very violent kind of understanding right. of, of the world if, if we view it through that lens, isn't it? Right, right. Well, you know, maybe our policies and the way our lifestyles now are, are a violent way of living in this world, you know, and our lifestyles doing violence to the overall ecosystem and environment and the global realities. Uh, and so to, uh, to become true and stewards means to live uh, more compatibly with our environments and that's transformation. Um, and, uh, you know, Genesis calls us to be co-creators. Right, right. You know, co-creators. And as you said, not to be dominating uh, creation. And that's, that, that, that grew over time because of we were the center of the universe. And one of um, one of my you know one of my favorite things about the Psalms is how how often the um, the trees are praising their Creator. Mm -hmm. It's it, if you just take the trees out of the out of the equation, you would be silencing a voice <laughs> in in the Psalms because the, the trees of the field clap their hands. The trees of the fields um, announce God's reign. The tree. It, it, not only that, water itself and, oh, yeah. and animals and, and all of creation somehow comes together into a symphony of praise. I have often, one of, my, one of my favorite theologians is uh, Walter Brueggemann, and won't mm. go, in, and you know, I know. a lay, yeah. person, lay person hears that name probably from their pastor a lot from the <laughs> pulpit. But um, Walter Brueggemann um, says that whenever, whenever uh, a, a, a a, a type of bird goes extinct, or whenever, whenever we have um, like a blight that happens with uh, with the trees, another voice has been silenced in the praise of God. Um, mm -hmm. What do you? What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I, well, I agree with that, um, and I uh, just re thinking about a report just recently that just came out about the species, and the, right. you know that right. is under real. Cons it's alarming. 
you know, it's a red alert. How about the uh, species are being extinct and what the impact will have on the environment and our glo global community. Uh, so, uh, you know, it is. It's, you look at the scriptures, you know, there's so much about uh, the environment and creation woven through from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation. You know, the environment is a very important part of uh, the, our theology. And, and so, you know, what, what, it, what are your thoughts as far as like how this is um, going to be playing out for through, through the remainder of, of the Easter season within your church? Well, I, you know, looking at uh, getting ready for Pentecost, you know, uh, the Pentecost celebration is uh, to go out into the world, bring the good news, to bring the message of Christ and empowered by the Spirit. Again, on that, uh, on the Pentecost celebration, I know uh, one of the responses and, you know, it's fitting for that day as it is any time in the church year is, Lord, send out your spirit, renew the face of the renew earth. The faith. So yeah. uh, that's what we're missioned to do, you know, and, the, and Pentecost is about being missioned uh, as a church to share the good news of Christ. Um, so, you know, where, where can we bring that? And certainly uh, into our social fabric where there's still ongoing violence in, the, in our tensions, in our interfaith tensions and what's happening and also in our world, uh, in the environment community, to bring this renewal spirit into all fabrics of our society and in life. I was thinking about uh, Kyle Rahner states that Jesus' resurrection is like the first eruption of a volcano which shows that in the interior of the world God's fire is already burning and this will bring everything to blessed ardor in its light. He is risen to show that this has already begun. Yeah. Uh, I just, I love that quote. And uh, you know, that fire is already um, burning uh, and it's erupting like a volcano. You know, when I think of that, I think of the Holy Spirit, you know, the symbolism of fire, you know, burning and erupting into our lives. So I think uh, and another thing about Pentecost is to be people of passion. Pa right, you know, right. passionate about this, you know the gospel, passionate about uh, this good news that we can bring. Again, think about this young Greta. You know, she's passionate, a 16-year-old, to wake up adults who have become apathetic. <laughs> and she has she has that volcano. Around oh, she her. does. Yes, yeah. I've heard her on the news, and yeah, and uh, she's very passionate. You know, and she's she says that my pa my mission is to. Uh, wake up the uh, apathetic adults. <laughs> They're not taking this message seriously. Right. And, and, and really, I mean, adults, adults tend toward um, trying to be the, you know, we want to extinguish the passions. We want to kind of be moderating kind of influence. And, and for, for, chil for, for teenagers and for young adults, there seems to be this need to want to, to um, to get us to move off of dead center. Mm -hmm. So, how, what, if we are going to be responsive to the work to, to millennials, um, especially on this issue of creation care, how might that influence influence the life of the church? What what should we be thinking about? Well, I think uh, we should be in dialogue with them, working with them, let them guide us. You know what? You know, you know. This is as we just mentioned. Uh, there, this is their passion and uh, we should be working with them. And that's what I mentioned just a little bit ago. Um, uh, Pope Francis in Laudato Si, you know, it's just a, a wonderful, uh, it grounds us in what action we can do theologically and spiritually. And we have this to contribute. You know, it's not just a political issue, it's a moral and ethical issue as well. And, and it seems to me too that, you know, well, one of, you know, another book that I, I read recently was um, Diana Butler Bass. She wrote a book, mm. book, book called Grounded. And it, one of her points in the book was that a church ought to be planting a garden. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, that what, she was, what she meant by that is that we should be concerned about planting and mm. growing things and how, how they're produced and how, how, we, how we consume what we what we what we work on, and, mm -hmm. and, and that there's something about faith that's involved in in that entire that entire um, uh, process that mm -hmm. leads up to us eating food off of our table. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, in fact, uh, in the parish, St. Francis, we have a you know, boy that's going through Eagle Scouts, 
young guy, man going through the Eagles, getting his Eagle Scout, and his project is he's doing raised gardens <laughs> in, on one of, part of our par property. You know, so that's, you know, so it's taken on that uh, call and something he really wanted to do, and it's, uh, you know, good, a good project for his Eagle Scout Award. Uh, and, he, and he's very enthused about it, and he has people working with him, and he's drawn in the community to support him. Now, I'm going to open up a little bit of a can of worms. It's an hour. We have a minute, 15 seconds. But before you talked about time, you know, and, and we're celebrating 50 days of Easter, and you, you, you said we need to slow down to, to really understand that um, mm -hmm. because what we, what we want to get to the end before, before it's actually finished. Mm -hmm. um, how important it is, it, is it for creation that we enter into a different understanding of time, do you think? Well, I think one, one way is to honor the Sabbath. You know, the Sabbath is to honor a uh, Sabbath rest, a creation rest. You know, uh, and it's honoring time too, to make it, uh, you know, to take time to uh, reflect, uh, rejuvenate, pause, you know. Uh, you know that's woven in the in the scriptures, the whole theology of Sabbath and uh, sabbatical and jubilee, uh, directed in many ways to uh, the land to give the land rest to rejuvenate itself. We, we don't honor the Sabbath, you know that time and that's holy time, and uh, I think that's one way we could ap appreciate and appropriate you know a holy time in our lives. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to be on Encounter. <laughs> because this has been a, an excellent cr uh, conversation on Easter and, and being, being renewed as mm -hmm. the creation is mm -hmm. um, with, through the face of the earth. So thank you for being on Encounter. It was great to have thank you. Thank you, today. Joe. Appreciate it. And, um, and for all of you, I wish you a great Sabbath day and may you find true rest and, and uh, nourishment for your soul today. Have a great day.